With all of that being said, we are at the point of the show where we do our Bitcoin price prediction, which basically means our in-house professional trader, Andy Demi, is going to give us his Bitcoin price prediction, ranging from the next seven hours all the way up to the next seven days and everything in between. He's been pretty reliable the last few weeks, to say the least. So do you accept this week's challenge? to give your professional trader Bitcoin price prediction for us. Completely. Um, I'm ready. Ready to go, Gav. You sound excited, mate. I am, mate. I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I love to do, guys. Um, yep. Yeah. Can everyone see my screen? Can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Great. So, um, Look, I, I wanted to kind of make this a bit more simple because, um, you know, I know I appreciate some people are, are beginners. And so I've, um, before we've got on, I've cleaned my chart up a bit. As you know, the guys that follow me a bit, like I, I like to have a lot of lines, but we're going to, we're going to just start this and, 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 and actually keep this quite simple, uh, to begin with. And I'm going to speak about what I think is going to happen next in Bitcoin. So one of the things that I'm, that is good to always have a look at is the, um, the cross of the 50 and the 200. So this is like, um, something that investors look at and because it's now becoming a lot more institutional, I think it's always good to see, you know, are we above the 50 EMA? Are we above the 200 EMA? And you know, where is it crossed? So you can see here that, um, this was when we were, you know, Bitcoin really, really did look quite bearish uh, at this point over here. You can see the 50th crossed below the 200. That hadn't happened for a very, very, very long time. Um, you know, you'd have to go back to sort of um, 2000, April. Um, and then since then, since the cross has happened upwards, which is basically here in May 2020, you know, Bitcoin has basically gone up from you know, a price of about 10,000 and it hit um, 65,000. Uh, since then, I'm really happy to see that we've had the cross back up. And um, you can see now the price is also above the 50 moving average. So that's that's a bullish sign for, for Bitcoin for sure. Um, you know, do I now think that we're definitely going higher? Well, we're, we'll break that down right now and I'll, I'll mm. kind of give you my views. So let's have a look at a couple of things and what might happen. So one of the things that I like to see is that I like to just kind of see, you know, if there's any any channels um, and you can just about see there's, um, there's a nice channel line. You may not be able to see the spikes, but we're spiking into them um, here. So spike, 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 and here as well. So that looks like a nice reactive um, resistance line. And if you kind of look, markets like to move at the same sort of speed across the board. So um, all I'm doing here is I'm just using that information to help uh, predict where the market might go next. Um, let's see, there was something in the middle as well over here. So you can see that the market really does like to react at the same sort of levels. And what you can also do is you can also take the current high and use that as a predictor as to where the market might go. Um, and that is right there. So, so that's like, um, so right now that that's basically showing us that Bitcoin is at that sort of angle resistance right now and potentially might store here. Now, the other thing that um, we do have here is the fact that we have that 50,000, which is a big psychological level. So um, you can see we, we kind of spiked into it here um and here so at the last we've had a couple of um rejections here in the past i'll just show you so just circle them here so you can see rejection rejection like a price action there and there and there so so definitely there's a lot of interest at fifty thousand. so for me right now you've got to kind of watch this carefully um and we want to kind of see if this market is going to break through 50,000. If we break through 50,000, um, then one of the things that we can do is we can look at the uh, Fibonacci 
to identify where the market might go. So uh, for those that understand how this works, you've got your A, B, C, D, okay, it completes the cycle there, okay, on, on our 1618 target. And then the new cycle begins right here. We'll just draw that in. And right now that gives us a pullback to about the um, 786, which was a perfect pullback. I mean, we did speak about 41,000 being a key area that could create a bounce. It has bounced so far. Like I said, it doesn't mean that's the low, okay? We, we've got a lot to prove still, but it was a great level, great entry point for those that took the opportunity to go long. Um, and now we're at another key point. Um, so if this market does break up from here, then the, the most obvious next target is gonna be this block here, which is basically, here's our yellow target, which is our 1272 extension. Um, and sometimes the market might overshoot towards um, the next level up. So I would block that out there as an area where I would say, okay, if Bitcoin can break through here, take out that high, we might have a scenario, something similar to this, and this is what I'll be looking out for. And we'll use the lower time frames to um, to help us. So if we do this, sorry, that's my pen. So if we do break, then one scenario that you could look at is a push up, a push down, and we'll, and this push down could be slightly different to this. Um, and then potentially we, we try and, and break up again and uh, make a, a, an attempt to break these um, all time highs. Um, if I just draw the imaginary fibs, guys, again, this might be a little bit advanced for people, but just to help us, um, if we draw our imaginary fibs, that's the 38.2 perfectly, as if I had practiced that. And then, so you'd be looking at something like that as a as a move to, to go back towards those all time highs. Um, that's a possibility. Right now we've got to break through here. Now, I wanna give you the other scenario. Um, and then we'll look at the lower time frames as well. So the other scenario that we've got is that we don't break here and we hold. Okay, so, um, so if on, in the short term, if you use like an hourly time frame, you might be even be able to find a short opportunity here, knowing that this is a key area to break. Um, now, if what could happen is you could just simply get a reaction and then this area here is like a, a, a new buy area for, for the final break, right? So that's possible as well. So we react and then we break. On the flip side, if we were to break through here, this low here, I would then turn quite bearish on the fact that maybe we're going to now go push back towards here. So if you have a look here, why have I chosen this area? Look at the look at this level of support that this area holds, guys. Make make a note of this. 46,800 is very, very important for this market. If we clean that out, okay, I, I think we potentially go lower um, and we potentially go and test this lower channel and, I, and i'll tell you in fib terms what that looks like so what we would do i'm just going to take the a b right here okay um so we have an a we have a b and we have a pullback basically at this stage towards this um uh, yellow line right now which is the one two seven um and often when it's a reversal it goes to the overextension so I would be looking at, in that case, if we were to, and this is just to be clear, if we break 46,800, um, 46,700, and we close below it, I would be looking for this area to target as, a, um, as, a, as an entry point, potentially for a long trade. So that would take us down to about um, 40 to 38,000 would be your, your kind of rough area to look at a long trade. So, and then if you, there's probably some, some support coming in around the same sort of channel. Um, so, and, and things can happen real, real quickly. Uh, remember we have got an important information coming out 
on Friday with non-farm payrolls. That ends up being bullish for the dollar. That's going to be bearish for Bitcoin. You could easily, easily, guys, get a spike, a big, big move down to here and then a, a bounce. OK, so I've given you two scenarios. You've got to, and they're very clear, guys. Watch for the break of 50,000 and this angle in particular. Do we close above it or not? If we do, I think we run up to this next block, in which case you could take lower time frame trades up. If we hold, you could take a scalp short up to this zone here. But if we break through this support area here, I'm going to be looking at a move potentially lower. So this is going to be quite key for me to see what happens here. The additional thing you can look at is the volume. So right now, um, you know, I've said this a few times. We always like to have the backing of the volume. It's not there yet. Um, I mean, you can you can take. It's not bad. I mean, you, you had a little bit of an uptick there in volume. That was a big, big bar, right? That was a big, big bar. Um, how does it compare? Like, if if you just kind of look at this, right? Let me show you something. So, look at these two down bars. Okay. The volume was there Two, you can see an obvious increase in volume. And then we've got two big up bars. So this one and this one, the volume is just not, it's not the same. It's less, right? It's a lot less. The buying volume at the moment is less than the selling volume. So for me, it's, it, this is not a slam dunk that we're going higher. Um, I think we, we have to be cautious. Um, we have to be very, very cautious. If I, for me, I, I want to see a break. I want to see a break of 50,000. I want to see an increase in volume. It doesn't make any sense to get long Bitcoin right now. Um, not here, not at this price. So that's kind of my stance on it. Uh, let me know if anyone's got any questions. I can also take, if we've got time, Gavin, I can have a quick little look at the lower time frames because it, it can be helpful. You let me know. Cool. So I think, look, I, that's been really good. And Look, I've been hearing so many people talking in <laughs> out in the world out loud when not necessarily they should. I mean, just a couple of hours ago, someone is set with a lot of followers is saying Bitcoin end of year 200,000. Um, and at the end of the cycle, which is around February, March time next year, they're predicting 400,000. Now, it's not to say that it can't get there, but what we're giving you here is between the next seven hours and the next seven days. And that's worked really well for everybody that's been here watching this week, weekly, week on week on week. How great has it been to have a former hedge fund trader like yourself, who's got more of a cautious nature, who's got more of a, you know, not so carefree with their money and their finances. You've got to have low risk, high probability trade written all over it for someone like you to get involved. So just to clarify for maybe people that are newer, Maybe they don't have as much trading experience. Just clarify the two options of where you think things are going to go within the next seven hours to seven days. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's there's maybe three three scenarios actually, rather than two. Like the 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 the, the, the third scenario is um, that we stay in this range between the key level, which is the forty six seven forty six eight key area so we stay within here and fifty thousand until the end of the week and then we have non-farm payrolls and that basically sparks the move up or down right bullish dollar um, strong numbers probably bearish bitcoin is the is the norm uh, bear in mind as i said in the um in the breakdown of the news it's not as simple as just the job numbers. You have to look at the hourly earnings as well. So that's going to have an impact. So let's just say if it's bullish news for dollar, bad for Bitcoin, bearish news for dollar, good for Bitcoin. So that could be the one scenario where we stay within this range. Short term, you could take an opportunity to sell here, buy here, and just trade the range. Okay, so that's option number one. Option number two is we break above 50,000 and we see a little bit of an uptick in volume, um, ideally. So it's not, so it doesn't look like and smell like a fake out. Remember, this is a manipulated game. So it, they, they could, 
it could easily be pushed up and then pushed back through. So you've got to ideally look at the volume. So when if it breaks, remember you're breaking fifty thousand. You should see some some activity. Go to the lower time frames and look at the volume on the breakout bar. That's the most important on the breakout bar. If it looks like a clean break, you can buy pullbacks, um, ideally to fifty thousand, all the way up to fifty four, fifty five thousand. On the flip side, if we break through forty six eight hundred, I'd be looking to buy sell pullbacks into this area here, all the way down towards um, thirty seven to thirty eight thousand. So. Those are the, the kind of key scenarios, and we're just waiting for the market to show us right now. But as of right now, the only opportunity that I can see just off this time frame is to look for a short signal to take advantage of where we are at resistance, if it, look, if it makes sense and it matches your trading plan.